joining us. Bob, as promised, first question. Okay. Hey, Dave. How you doing? Good. Um, go ahead and write this down. This is a, it's a seven parter. No, no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Um, hey, uh, Holman's obviously a guy you guys have faced last year. You know, the last couple of years, I guess. Um, but last year, you know, he didn't pitch bad. I think he went. I looked up five and a third and had a lot of strikeouts. We gave up some runs. Kind of. What do you remember about that game? And and if you've gotten to watch much of him video or whatever him this year. Does he look different or, you know, why were his stats so much better so far? Yeah, I mean, I don't remember a lot about the game. I knew it was a, I think it was a game two of that series. And, uh, you know, he pitched pretty good against us. And it was, we 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 finally, I don't know, broke loose a little bit. But uh, really kind of focusing on this year, um, from what I've seen and what I've watched, he's, he's just better. And, you uh, you know, he's throwing the ball over the plate and he's got really, really good stuff, good secondary stuff. I mean, I think his batting average against him is amazing. Uh, so he's uh, he's doing everything you're supposed to do as a number one. Uh, you know, ERA is under one and he just isn't giving up much. So, uh, you know, I don't know if they're going to throw him tomorrow or Friday or Saturday, uh, but when we do face him, it's going to be a handful. And, and then Hagen obviously has been so, so sharp um, since that very first game. Uh, what would he expect from him? And I assume you look how I ask Andrew's question, keeping the same rotation. Yeah. Well, first on Hagen, uh, you know, I guess just what we expect is him to go out and compete like he always does. And hopefully, you know, get us into the game and late into the game uh, because that's what he's been doing. He's been throwing a lot of strikes. He competes hard, and um, he's given us an opportunity. We didn't give him much run support last weekend, but our bullpen with, uh, you know, a couple guys, or actually one guy came out and finished it up for us, and uh, McIntyre just was lights out, but he gave us a chance. And, uh, you know, as far as the rotation, uh, we're going to change it up just a little bit. We're going to go Smith. Uh, Molina and Tigard in that order. Just want to give Brady another day uh, to get right. So uh, that's kind of where we're going to do it. That's why it's always good to ask about the rotation. I'll turn it back over to Oliver. I might, I might have a couple later. Thanks. Okay. Ellis. Yeah, Coach, LSU is probably not quite on the same level they were last year, but still a very talented team. And they're coming off of two close series losses. Just how big of a challenge is this to face a team that's going to have a lot of motivation coming in this weekend? Well, they were awfully good last year and they're awfully good this year. And, you know, it's still early in the season, even though, you know, most teams have played around 25 games, there's still 60% of the games left and teams are just starting to heat up and figure it out and get those pitching rotations right or how they want to handle things. And, and uh, uh, I think they're really talented. I mean, you look at talent on that team, it's as good as anybody in the country and, and they know that, we know that, and everybody that plays them knows that. It's, uh, you know, really, uh, obviously, our focus is to just do what we can do and do it well and, you know, control what we can control. But they're uh, they're awfully good. Uh, and looking at their bullpen, it hasn't been exactly lights out, but a lot of their best arms are left-handed, like Lower, Herring, and uh, Ackenhausen and all that. So just how big of a challenge is that for your lineup, which has a lot of really good left-handed bats? And how how big is this maybe for some of your right-handed bats on the bench? Well, it's, you know, there's, it's always, always good to have some matchups where we could make some changes and, uh, you know, right or left, depending on what they bring in. And sometimes if you look at the the splits, you know, sometimes lefties hit their lefties better or vice versa. You just have to kind of see what you see as a coach. And now you guys are swinging at them and, and then also, you know, maybe go back to, and, and, and kind of go with what, maybe statistics have shown us throughout the season so far on, on what the bet matchup it is. And a lot of times just comes down to as your, if your hitter's feeling good and he's confident and hot, let him go, whether it's left on left, right on right out of the pen. Uh, but yeah, they, they've got, they've got a lot of talent in that bullpen, really good arms and they can mix and match pretty good with anybody with, uh, with the number of guys they got. So it's always a big challenge. Hutch. 
Dave, you mentioned the the switch in Molina and, and Tiger. You said to give Tiger another day to get right. Is that a, a health deal or is it a mechanical thing or just kind of what what's going on there? Just let him just let him rest a little bit. Let him get get it let get everything straightened up and feel really good. Nothing wrong with him. I know whenever we talked to Matt Hobbs after the game uh, that you missed, he he seemed pretty confident there was just a, a simple mechanical thing that's kind of led to some of those walks by Brady. Just how confident are you that he'll get that figured out? Oh, I'm I, I feel great about Brady. His stuff's good. He competes hard. Uh, you know, I think that you know he's had a little bit of command issues with his fastball. He gets that straightened out. He'll be good to go. So I have all the confidence in the world in him. This may be somewhat of a dumb question, but like you mentioned how Fouch has kind of added that new pitch and how it's got some sync to it. Just how how do you go about adding a pitch like that? Like, was it something y'all specifically said, hey, this is what we want to do? Or is there something y'all saw like on the the metrics or just kind of how, how did that come about? All of the above. Um, you know, you just we needed something that was moving a little bit more. Um, you know, it's got a great arm, throw strikes. Just need something that, uh, you know, that's a little harder to square up. Because, you know, kids can time up 98 miles an hour if, if if you don't have something else to go with it. So if you can throw something 96, 97, 98, and then throw something 94, 95, it's a little bit different. Plus, if it's sinking or running more, uh, you can experiment with grips. And uh, probably that's probably the number thing. Number one thing you do is, is experiment with the grip, see if you can get it to do some different things. And it's not unusual for pitchers of any age to to be doing that and to, just to try to find one more thing that's going to help them. And I think that's kind of the case here. Jackson. Yeah, Dave, uh, Vahiva, he just seems so much more settled even just when we got to talk to him yesterday. And I know you've mentioned specifically not chasing pitches, getting in better counts, but how much has, you know, confidence made a difference for him and his, uh, you know, recent play? Well, you, you know, first off, hitting's really hard. It's hard to hit that ball. It's coming in hard, moving, spinning, whatever. Uh, so you have to be confident. And, you know, he shows really good bat to ball skills and, and, practice game scrimmages uh like i said he was he was tearing it up when the season started against our pitching and our pitching obviously is pretty good um and then when the season started i think he tried to do too much and uh, then he tried to catch up and he finally just said heck with it you know i'm gonna take what they give me they want to walk me all they can walk me if they want to come in they can come in but he's done a, a lot better job lately of uh you know swinging at better pitches you know you're gonna go out of the zone every now and then because you just you just do you get fooled a little bit or maybe you're guessing for something you get it it's just a little more uh away than you thought it was when it left their hand but uh i feel like that he's a very confident kid and and uh you know it's really good to get him rolling a little bit and you you talked about last week the uh letting your guys know and just, just how desperate Auburn was going to be coming off the sweep. Uh, um, do you have to have the same conversation with, you know, LSU losing the first two series, or is there maybe enough juice in the locker room that that doesn't need to be even said right now? Yeah. And I only said that because we were going on the road and and it was true because they, they needed to, to win a series and climb back in because uh, just because they do, you know, it's, when you lose a couple of series, man, you start scrambling a little bit and you got to figure out a way to win. And, uh, fortunately, we went down there and won a couple one-run games. And uh, now I don't have to say anything, LSU coming in. I mean, they have a they have a great talent, great team. They know how to win. Um, they they know us. We know them. It's uh, – I don't really have to say a whole lot. Really, our focus today and our workout, and it won't be long. We'll just, just be on a lot of little things and getting really, really more than anything just getting – Try to be as strong as we can physically and mentally when we start to play tomorrow. And and last thing, real quick, I know you might not reveal the specifics, but does shifting Tigard and Molina change anything from how you approach the bullpen arms and who you you know summon later in games? Um, I don't think it will uh, the first game for sure. Uh, you know, just that, then after that we have to see what we see, but. Uh, I don't I don't feel like it really makes any difference on who we pitch out of the pen tomorrow or or probably even Friday. It's uh, you know, they're they're all all three of our starters are 
our experienced older kids that don't get too riled up or too rattled so far anyway. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I just feel like that they, they're all going to give us a good start. If it does, if one of them doesn't go good, then yeah, that could make a difference if it's early in the series compared to late in the series on who we bring in. Bob, well, back to you. Yeah, Dave, you look at those LSU stats, you see a couple of familiar names up at the top of their batting order, uh, Tr Travinsky and, and White. Uh, well, what would you say about those guys? Well, they both have tremendous power. Uh, they do a great job of uh, driving in runs. Um, you know, you won 27 and one's got 23 RBIs. And, you know, uh, it's uh, it's veterans, it's strength, it's opposite field power, pull power. Um, they can get you hit when they need to. Two strike hitters, they'll fight you. I mean, it's just two really tough bats in the middle of that lineup. And and then the weather's supposed to be pretty nice. I mean, you'd probably get great crowds if it was bad weather, but I think, you know, good weather helps. Just what are you anticipating from the atmosphere and the fans? And, you know, it's always a big deal when LSU comes to town, obviously. Just a big-time atmosphere. I mean, you know, we've been – We've been drawn from great crowds over the years, and I don't see anything any different. You know, the weather's going to be fine, and you got two teams ranked in the top ten, defending national champion coming in. So, uh, I imagine that ticket's going to be hard to get. And you guys are ranked number one, so you got defending champs versus the number one team. We are. <laughs> I know. You never talk about it. Yeah, <laughs> I really talk about it. It's just. It's, it's great, but at the same time, it's it's just a number and a lot of season left. Things are going to move around. and uh, But, it, you know, it's uh, it's fun for probably everybody involved. Yeah. Hey, this kind of beat question, you know, everybody's obviously made a big deal about you being a grandfather, and that's great. You, and, uh, you know, Karen, she, she, she's a grandmother, and she I know she's kind of been the rock of your family all these years, just wondering how she's doing and if you want to say something about her. Yeah, she's done an incredible job. Uh, you know, being a being a coach's wife, obviously. I mean, they're they're kind of in the background, but you know, they're doing everything. You know, from you know making sure the kids get to school early or get get where they're supposed to be to being at the games, and then you know, help when planning weddings. I mean, you could go on and on. And uh, and then for me personally, you know, it just takes a lot off my shoulders, especially in the spring, where you know I can just put everything into this job and, and not have to worry about things getting done. She just super organized. And then, you know, with the, with the grandbabies coming and then all of a sudden you're going from one to get having triplets, you know, I think she kicked it into overdrive, just being with my daughter and helping and uh, you know, continuing right now, you know, through this, you know, through this time when you have, you know, babies that are in the NICU and they have to, they're going to be there a while. So uh, there's a, there's a lot going on right now, but, uh, I wouldn't be sitting her with here in this job without her. I can guarantee you that. I'm good. Thanks, Dave. Okay. Ellis Hush, any final words? Coach, are you a huge fan of Gorilla Ball? Um, I'm good with it. I tell them they can do whatever they want, just as long as they stay in the dugout. Um, you know, it's just, uh, it's a team thing and it's, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's not all about hitting home runs, but that's when they celebrate. It's about, you know, just the team and camaraderie and having some fun more than anything, showing a little personality. Um, I'm I'm all good with it. And, um, you know, fortunate enough to hit a home run. We Anything that we do to celebrate about our team, we're not pointing at, a, at the other team or uh, trying to stir things up. We're just trying to have a little bit of fun in, in our dugout and, been kind of fun actually have you put the mask on yet no. not when no not when anybody could see me you know? <laughs> all right coach appreciate your time okay see you guys